to the Keel Hauled Podcast. I'm your host, Captain Logan, and we've got a lot of Sea of Thieves news to talk about today, so tie yourselves to the mast and hold fast. First up on today's docket, we're going to go over a couple tweets from the Sea of Thieves Twitter account. So first off, in celebration of Sea of Thieves' upcoming launch, there's an actual person being launched out of a cannon. Witness the spectacle on at Watch Mixer tomorrow, 313 at 5 p.m. GMT, 10 a.m. Pacific and 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where the human cannibal will attempt to set a new world record. Also, East Coast Pirates celebrate the March 20th launch of Sea of Thieves in style. Head to the Microsoft Store on Fifth Avenue in New York City to enjoy shanties with our pirate band, costume competitions, and more. Links are going to be in the notes. All right, time to talk about our second item on today's docket, and that's going to be the final beta. We had our final last beta before launch and i gotta say i was really excited about this because as we learned they added a bunch of stuff to it it's not quite the full game but it gave us enough things to look forward to to kind of get an idea of what's going to be expected as we move into the live game i was really excited about this so it started uh last friday 2 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for me and went till Sunday, 2 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, which didn't actually happen to be 2 a.m. It happened to be 3 a.m., but that's daylight savings time for you. So some of the great things that we actually got to enjoy uh, were the merchant. Actually, you know what? Hold off. Before I get into this, I just want to say all of these betas have been exceptional. I've been having so much fun, and I'm glad that the last month and a half has been basically nothing but scale tests, betas, news, and videos. Like, the Sea of Thieves community is just doing an awesome job. I've seen a lot of people come out of the woodwork and start supporting this by streaming it, making podcasts, making YouTube videos, just all kinds of awesome stuff. And and the guys, the people at Rare, they've been, they've been doing a great job letting us know about things that they want to do with the game and getting feedback from us. So I, I really love that. But okay, so it's I'm sorry. It's the last beta. <laughs> Everything from now on is going to be live beta or live full progression. We're actually going to be working towards becoming that pirate legend. So just kind of exciting. So I just I sorry, I, I needed a second to kind of talk about the fact that this is going to be the last time we get to really touch this thing before it gets live. So I hope you had a good time. I hope you learned a lot and I hope you're looking forward to start deciding on who you want to be as a pirate legend. All right, so let's talk about some of the things that we did learn about this final beta because we already knew that we were going to be getting the Merchant Alliance as well as Skull Fortresses, but there are a couple things that we didn't see coming, and that's going to be more ship customization as well as additional clothes and weapon skins, which I was actually pretty surprised to see that much content in the final beta because a lot of the, the ship customization... None of that was actually applicable. We couldn't even use it. So at least to, not to my knowledge, I bought a figurehead, this th- three skull figurehead, but I couldn't find out how to actually apply it to a ship. I don't know if it was because I wasn't captain or if it wasn't something that I tried because I was in a party at the time. So I just bought it and then I tried to apply it, but I couldn't find any kind of interface for it. So not sure how that quite works out. Not even sure if it was still active, but we did find out that along with the figureheads, the sails and the paint jobs, we are kind of looking around the range of four to 8,000 gold pieces to purchase one of those items. So we're still left in the dark as far as how we apply these, who has control over that, because at the moment we have party systems and we don't know if it's up to the captain or the party leader to figure out whether or not their figurehead ship customizations and stuff are going to take place precedent or over the rest of the crew or if that's something that you have to vote on we're still not sure about how that all works and and stuff so looking forward to kind of finding that out more as we go along but as it is we're just kind of stuck wondering so i bought it i couldn't find out a way to apply it so 
just kind of dealing with that for now. So outside of that, we got some really cool clothing. We got some new weapon skins and stuff. The Merchant Alliance, I have to say, has some of the best looking stuff outside of the uh, Black Dog pack and the... Um, the ferryman outfit so really really excited to see uh, even more stuff Let's see see just how much clothing they really are giving to us to kind of customize our ourselves after we've created our our own kind of uh our, our specific pirate so really cool to see that we also got to try out the Merchant Alliance, which the Merchant Alliance, if you don't know, will have at least three types of animals as well as cargo crates and gunpowder kegs, as well as other little things that we haven't figured out yet that you'll have to gather up to complete a list of items needed then take all of those items to a specific outpost to turn into the Merchant Alliance representative to get your payment. So at first, these contracts are small and seem pretty dull. Uh, find two chickens and bring them back. Eventually, you'll work yourself up to gathering different types of animals as well as cargo. And the payments for these contracts is significantly more at lower levels than you would get with the traditional gold holders chests. So I was actually pretty surprised because though you're not quite sure where you'll have to go to be able to get the correct items on the list there there's a lot of kind of drive to kind of venture out and actually look for those animals because they are worth a lot once you get all of them so i was kind of surprised to see the rewards in the one to 1500 gold piece range for one quest that is actually fairly uh fairly generous as far as time goes i think in game time, they typically give you around five to seven days to complete a quest for finding two chickens, which I was fine with because I usually get distracted when we're doing these things as well, too. So as I'm going to an island, I find a couple gunpowder kegs and maybe a message in a bottle or I get attacked by another ship. So it doesn't it doesn't really kind of it doesn't hurt you for taking a while to get these items the biggest problem that i'm seeing right now is is that when you have a merchant alliance voyage going you can't put up any other voyages it's that voyage and that voyage alone now once you complete that voyage by heading to an outpost to actually turn it in then you can put another quest or voyage down so the the biggest trouble i'm running into this is, is that if you're sailing around to multiple islands to try and find some of these these creatures as well as items you're locked into that, and the only way you can actually clear that is if you head back to an outpost, which I understand is kind of the original intent that Rare wanted for us to go out, get a chest, or get a couple chests, depending on the number of maps that we have, and then head back to the outpost and turn those in right away, and then head right back out on a new voyage. But the community has kind of spoken and said... We like chaining these voyages together, especially the gold hoarders. It's great to kind of throw one down, go out, get some chests, then start all over again and see how many you can rack up before you feel like you really need to go to an outpost to start turning them all in, which is why they've had such a problem with the, not problem, but they've had so much overload on their services side where they're having to take into account that tons and tons of people are playing all at the same time and they're all turning in large numbers of chests and their services section wasn't able to properly count the chests that were getting turned in to dish out the gold and reputation for it. So looking at the Merchant Alliance, we're starting to see a lot more of how they originally intended us to do the Gold Hoarders quests, where you have a voyage, you go out, collect the items or dig up the chests, bring them back to the outpost, and then start a new voyage as opposed to chaining voyages and stuff together. <laughs> It's yet to be seen if we will be able to continue on a voyage because we've already found that there are cargo holders for animals out on 
the islands as we're going about so we can pick up more if we're out and about we happen to pick up one but i would really love to see the ability to have multiple reputation or trade faction voyages going at the same time i'd love to be able to start a gold hoarders quest in the middle of a merchant alliance quest while having an old uh order of souls quest going as well so that you know if i go to an island to kill a captain the nearby island also has the gold treasure chest that i need to dig up as well and while i'm there i might as well be picking up chickens pigs and snakes snakes by the way are going to be part of the merchant alliance P chickens pigs and snakes as well as like gunpowder kegs and stuff that i find at the forts as i'm killing captains to be able to get all the items i need for these these merchant quests and that way it puts a lot more risk on me as a pirate to decide whether or not i can handle all of these items as i eventually make my way back to an outpost because yes i could be in for a load of gold but at the same time i'm running the risk of ruining this all by getting attacked by a ship and losing everything to a bad battle so high risk high reward i would love to see that implemented in the game because that's that's kind of the point of being a pirate legend right is is that you are notorious for being able to have these three voyages going on at the same time and being able to kill lots of things and get the gold and pick up the stuff to turn it in and contract this and you know that would be awesome so i would love to see that i would love to see the ability to have that going on all at once that's kind of my my uh, uh like post launch goal with this so hope that that's already implemented and that that's not even an issue but as we saw in a video later that i'll talk about some things that are coming to light from the community are features that Rare did not initially plan on putting into the game and are now kind of struggling to see about getting that in at launch. And actually, one of the things that I'll talk about in a bit is kind of a big deal because it really impacts how you decide on starting the game. And that's a week away. So let's talk about Skull Fortresses. I had the opportunity to try one of these uh, during the final beta, and I gotta say, it really kicked my butt. I was not expecting this to be so hard. I had already heard a couple people say, hey, don't try and go in there as a two-man sloop because you're gonna get your butt handed to you, and they weren't kidding. They weren't kidding in the slightest. So if you haven't tried this, basically the best way I can describe it is that there is a fort out in the world and then you see a giant skull, which I'm sure you've probably already heard about from me in past episodes, that is looming over this fortress. And as you start to approach this fortress, the music and mood changes. And it's really awesome. The ambiance is amazing. And I kudos to the music team for, for making these decisions because it was a big change in how I felt I was going into it. In fact, my heart rate started to go up and the anxiety started to, to build, but then the, the adrenaline was kicking as well and I was having a good time. So uh, as, as you approach these, uh, we've all kind of dealt with it if you played in the beta, skeletons manning cannons and kind of lobbing shots at you. And for the most part, they're pretty accurate uh, and, and they can generally hit you from pretty far off if you let them or if you, if you don't change course. The ones at these forts are deadly accurate. They are not playing around. They will shoot multiple cannons at you head on. They don't care. It's just like shot after shot after shot. And if you can make it to land, then kudos because it is hard to do without sinking. Uh, we actually made it to land. CJ from the Player One podcast and I uh, made it there and we landed we still had one cannoneer uh, shooting at our, our aft on our sloop, and it wasn't doing enough damage to worry about us sinking, but we couldn't really access anything on the back of our boat. So we were constantly under fire, and I eventually had to go out and try and kill that cannoneer. Meanwhile, he's trying to go on land to actually clear out some of the skeletons. We found out this fort had already been attacked, and some of the waves had already started. And I don't know if the waves reset or not, but the skeletons on there want blood. I mean, they will come after you in hordes. They are just like 7, 8, 10, 12. They'll start coming at you if you jump on that island. And as soon as you get in the water, they can't really do anything for whatever reason. But the ones that can shoot you will shoot you. And the ones that 
that can't will stand there waiting for you until eventually they kind of reset and go back to their their the actual fort itself. So two people trying to take this on is really hard. And eventually we <laughs> we eventually had a sloop come and we tried to let them know, hey, we're not here, you know, we're not trying to make beef with you. We're trying to get the, the gold. We'll split it 50-50. Just help us out because it's really hard. You won't be able to get it yourselves. You need our help as well too. So they were helping us uh, as far as we could tell until eventually we had a galleon come up on us and the galleon just started letting us have it. And that was... It was the most frustrating thing because we've got tons of skeletons attacking us. We've got the cannoneer in the fort shooting our ship. We've got the four guys on the galleon that just hopped off and are trying to kill us and spawn camp us. Meanwhile, our ship is stuck in the, the shoals of this island fort and we can't do anything. So we're just frustrated. Eventually, they sink us and we realize that the sloop and the galleon were working together, which that was even more frustrating. So... With a brand new ship, CJ and I come up with this brilliant plan. We scour this island and we find two gunpowder kegs. And we therefore mount one of them at the very end of our figure, of our, of our, uh, I'm blanking on what it's called, but at the very end of the yard arm, I think is what it says. Um, if you're, if you know sailing terms, help me out. Let me know at, at captain underscore logan.com or not dot com, Twitter. You know what I mean? So we, we put one on there, and I'm like, all right, that's the one that's going to blow up when we ram them. Because we're going to just ram them head on. We're going to go back to that skeleton fort. And I don't even care about the gold at this point. I just want to hit these guys and sink their ship while they're trying to battle all these skeletons. So we find two. So one of them I'm planning on using down in the hull. So I'm going to board them after we ram them. And then I'm going to run down with this thing. And I'm going to blow it up and suicide myself. I don't care at this point. So... We start sailing back to the fort and we see that they're still there and the sloop is there and the sloop is still going. And we realize at that point, that was when we kind of it clicked. It was like, all right, I think those guys are working together. I don't think that they're, I don't think they're actually going to fight each other. So we come about and we line up our ship so that it is headed right for their starboard side. And we just go full tilt sailing right into them and we crash into them and i was really disappointed on one small tiny thing and it actually worked out for the best because we rammed them and the gunpowder keg at the very tip of our ship didn't explode that afforded me two seconds of opportunity because the one guy sitting on the galleon the one lookout was about to jump on board our ship and just as he was jumping into the air I managed to shoot the gunpowder keg and it exploded. And what I found out is that there's actually a gunpowder keg right by the, the base of their their uh, their bow. And that one exploded. So two gunpowder kegs just exploded. One in this guy's face and one at the bow of their ship in the water. So I grab the other one and I jump on their ship. And I go down all the way to the back of their ship. And I just, boom, blow it all the way. Heck. So... At this point, I'm dead. I'm on the ferry ship. I'm waiting to hear back from CJ. And CJ is telling me that he is dead as well and the sloop's gone. So we <laughs> we respawn and we get our new ship and we decide we just want to sail by and see if it sank. We're pretty sure it sank. We didn't get the satisfaction of watching it, though. And we sail back there. And as we're sailing back there, we pass the island that has the Black Witch uh, shipwreck on it, the one that we spawned on a, last time. And there's a brand new galleon there. And we found out that the four guys that were on it were killed in the fort, and we killed the one on the actual ship. And they all had to go restart the entire fort. And that was satisfaction enough for us. We were pretty happy with that. So that was just one of the few skeleton fort stories that I got to participate in. I'm sure there's tons of them out there where people were actually more successful and got to work with others. And that was just, I mean, at that point, we had two little shiny goblets that we found on the island in a captain's chest. And we were like, okay, that's enough gold for us. And we're pretty happy with that. So... I, I'm loving the skeleton forts. It's it's beautiful. It's dark. It's really hard. And I think it's going to be great for people that have a good team of people who are willing to partner with other people for small alliances or just go and wreck someone else's day. That was that was probably my favorite point at the beta. Uh, actually, no, I had one other point that I didn't get to see, but um, I didn't get to participate in it. But 
I watched a couple friends of mine sink a sloop by hiding a chest of sorrows in their crow's nest and then leaving and watching it sink. That was pretty good. They drowned a ship without even letting loose one cannonball. So that was pretty awesome. All right. So the third item on today's docket, I'm actually going to cover the Xbox Insider season premiere that happened back on March 10th during the final beta. Uh, I'm going to have a link to their YouTube video so that you can kind of check out some of the little tidbits that are through this two-hour show. The first half hour is just a, a timer. I hate when they do this. These guys, they stream this stuff, and then they put the whole file up there, trim off the half hour of stuff that, that's just a countdown timer to let people know when that's starting. Jeez. Okay, but anyway, so... When you guys check out this video, there are a couple time slots that I want you to let you know about to get an idea of when you can start seeing some of the Sea of Thieves data. So the first one's around the 29 minute mark. The second one is around the 42 minute mark. There's another one at the 49 minute mark. And then I want to say that the last one I remember is around the 56 minute mark. So they have it kind of sprinkled throughout the entire two-hour show, and a lot of it is stuff that we already know, but there are some good tidbits about it. We got a good overview of the game and what each character will be playing towards, as well as the what the, the three trade companies will entail. And then we get to hear from my favorite guy, Joe Neat. And he talks about some of the stats during the last, or during, during the current last beta, or last final beta. We'll just say last final beta. So... It was really kind of cool to see how many people were playing, how many people were streaming. I personally didn't stream that much this weekend. I really just wanted to jump in there and play, uh, especially since the Friday or the Saturday night uh, stream that I was doing was a different game. So I didn't really get a chance to stream that because I'd already promised people I was going to play Splatoon 2. So uh, with the stats that we found out from that, a lot of people, even with the final beta, are still having a lot of fun with this game. And it was really kind of cool to see that they had segmented it based on solo duos and uh, four player ships. And I just I want to take a little note to kind of just a little bit of a, a, a tweak, little kind of thing that they could fix about this. I was playing with some friends, and they uh, were about to kind of continue on another journey, and I wanted to jump in with them, but I couldn't because they had chosen a three-man specific galleon. And I really think that this is nice because sometimes you have three people that you want to play on a galleon. You don't want to have a fourth random person. But please, please... If a friend on your list wants to join and they click join the game, let them join the game. I don't know how hard this is, but just because you have it set up so that three men in a group are playing on a galleon or three, sorry, not three men, three people are playing on a galleon and a friend of theirs wants to join in, just let that person join in. Don't restrict it to three. Make them finish a voyage or cancel a voyage close the game, reopen it, invite all the people into a four-man galleon. And, and, you know, I understand that there's there's problems with going from two to three because it's a different ship and it would be completely weird to have a ship just randomly change in the middle of a game. But if you're a single player and you want to have a friend jump on, but you've already locked it in to have a solo play because you don't want to have a random person play with you and you just want to play with your friends, let that be an option. Say, allow that, allow my friends to join in on this game if there's possible room without changing ship size. So that's going to be my my little nitpick for right now. But uh, going back to the video, the the Insider Xbox season premiere, Joni kind of does a lot of uh, uh, talking about some of the things that are going on right now as far as the state of Skeleton Forts, as well as the new merchant quests, and then some of the feedback from the community uh, as far as some things that we've said that they've tried to implement. And there's one that I want to give credit to, the Crow's Nest, because I, I saw this, I fell in love with his idea, and I really hope that Rare saw this video and was like, geez, why didn't we even think about this? So... It's, it's to do with the character Infinite Pirate Generator, the IPG, as, as they call it. And it has a lot to do with the fact that if you see a pirate that you like, you are, you are either... It's, it's the FOMO. It's FOMO has taken over the Pirate Generator because you don't want to refresh 
a new line of eight pirates and miss out on the one that was really close, really close on what you wanted, but you didn't know if there was going to be the perfect one in the next round and how long it would take to get to the to the one that was going to be great. I know that some people spent half an hour going through the different uh, possible generations of pirates. I know I was rushing through it, and I picked one that I was pretty happy with, but I still spent about a good 15 minutes. So one of the things that he said that the community called out for and that the uh, team at Rare is trying to work on is pinning pirates in the infinite pirate generator to be able to say like, okay, let's take this one and then you'll refresh. And then if you find another one, you can pin that one. And then that way you've got kind of a, a, a selection, an option of pirates so that, you know, if you get to the point where you're like, all right, I'm three hours in, I still haven't found my perfect pirate, but I've got four options here that are very close. I'm going to pick out of one of those four options and I haven't wasted my time because at least I can, I know that there were four options that I could go with. So I'm glad that they're doing this. I heard that they're rushing to get this in before launch. It's really important that they get this in before launch. And I, and I I hate to be this guy that says, you know, work hard all the time, make my happiness rise because I'm paying $60. I, I, I would buy this game twice if they asked me to, if they could get this feature in, because genuinely I feel like if we can't change our base body type, in game post picking it then it's it's gonna it's gonna suck it's really gonna suck if later on we decide that we didn't want that pirate but because we wanted to get in we wanted to get playing and we wanted to to know that you know like we this was going to be our pirate for the time being but we didn't know if we were going to be completely happy with it then at least give us the opportunity to choose certain pirates as we're selecting through them and have options because there may be something that we didn't even fathom didn't even know that that was a possibility until we saw it in the roulette and we passed up on four possibles uh trying to get just a little bit better of that and we never saw it because there's just such an infinite number of possibilities with this generator so i would love for these guys to be able to manage this i have a feeling they will because they're brilliant but it's going to kill me if I if I feel like I'm going to be limited to one lock-in and I'm going to have to spend a half hour, an hour or so constantly refreshing this generator to try and beat the RNG machine before I even begin this game. All right, so towards the end of this two hour long video the stream that was over on mixer i'm gonna have a link to this next item on the docket because i don't know what it entails but it sounds pretty crazy actually so xbox and rare have kind of decided on this golden banana quest which after looking at what they did they basically forged a bundle of golden bananas that are stamped with the sea of thieves reapers mark uh on them and then have them in a nice little chest and this is a contest that starts on the 19th and i don't know how this is supposed to work i didn't get a chance to read the nitty gritty about it but here's basically what's going on gather a, a pirate crew of up to four people and then starting at 1 a.m pacific time a new clue will be released every three to four hours over three days. Answers to these riddles could be anywhere, so look sharp. They are There are 15 fiendish puzzles to solve. Complete the riddle. Each Enter each answer into one of the 15 blank spaces in the passage, but you won't be able to submit them until after all 15 puzzles have been released so keep track of your answers as you go enter your team when you have filled in all 15 answers in the passage submit your crew's entry the fastest crew in each region will with all the correct answers will be invited to take part in an ultimate test where one victorious crew will win the golden bananas so that's really awesome. I'm glad that they're doing this. Uh, it, it really just kind of adds to the hype. 
and especially with kind of riddles and Easter egg hunts, uh, it's it's great to see that the the people at Rare and the people at Microsoft are doing something to get the teams or get the get the fans kind of invigorated with this ultimate gold bananas, which I think is hilarious that they're doing golden bananas. So I'm gonna have the link to this in the show notes as well too, uh, as well as the video for the Xbox Insider season premiere. I don't know if they're going to be covering much Sea of Thieves content post-launch in that series of shows, but if you're into Xbox, and at any time, they're going to be covering a lot of information, and the show length is pretty pretty hefty, so they've they've covered a lot of stuff in those. So, But the Golden Banana Quest, it's starting on Monday the 19th at 1 a.m. I don't know... Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be participating in this. For one, I don't have three other people that I know can commit to doing this. So I think it's cool. I don't know if I'm going to be doing it, but I would love to hear your guys' perspective. If you think this is something that you you and three other people are going to be actually jumping in to try and win these bananas for the region. Go America. So anyway, um, the last thing uh, I have is content uh, requests. If you guys are making content or if you guys have any kind of feedback, I would love to know about this. Uh, there's plenty of podcasts that I've started to listen to on a regular basis, and I troll the forums as well as Reddit to look out for different stuff. And I have found a lot of really cool content, but if there's something that you'd like me to know about, hit me up. Let me know. You can reach me. I've got contact information in the show notes. I'll let you know right now. Captain Logan uh, at gmail.com. I use Logan, L-O-G-U-N, C-A-P-T, L-O-G-U-N at gmail.com. You can hit me up there. You can hit me up on Twitter at C-A-P-T underscore L-O-G-U-N. If you want to sail with me, that would be an honor. I would love to be able to sail with some fans of the show. You can hit me up on Xbox at Captain Logan, all one word, all spelled out, C-A-P-T, A-I-N, L-O-G-U-N, all that fun stuff. So uh, let me know what you're doing. I also have a Discord, which is Keelhauled Podcast Discord that I used to have just for friends, just for quick little get-togethers and stuff. I'd love to get some more Sea of Thieves conversation going in there because I would love to have people have a place that is where you can kind of get together if you want to have small groups join up. Say you want to get a partner and, and go do some merchant quests or if you want to go kill a pirate captain for Order of Souls. I would love to have people start jumping in on that as well. And for the first time, I'm actually going to start asking for reviews too. If you guys can go to iTunes or Google Play and give me a rating, honest rating with some feedback. I would love that as well too. I, I'm not a huge person for asking for like feedback on stuff. I just like people to consume content and what they think of it's what they think of it. And if they want to hit me back, they can hit me back. They kind of know where to hit me back at. But I would love to get a couple reviews in there just so that people kind of see me on the charts right now you can find me if you search for sea of thieves or if you actually know like the keel hall podcast but i i just want to kind of grow with the community on this as well too because i'm really excited for this game i'm actually kind of hunting for a uh, xbox limited edition controller for the sea of thieves because it's i keep wanting it and wanting it and the more it becomes less available the more i want it it's just that that fomo is getting the better of me but I hate that they uh, got me with the, the three dice and the five-sided dice. That was that was brutal, but I'm looking forward to this game. It's a week away. It's a week away! It's a week away!